you say, well, that's not important. There's only 16 seconds left. They have to get the ball inbound. That's right. And remember, there's a four seconds. Actually, it's about 4.3 between the shot clock and the game clock. So for the Tar Heels, even if Florida State makes it, they're going to have time to get the ball up the court and get a shot. Well, conventional wisdom is always, Dan, you put the ball in the air the very least with four. If, if you don't have a shot clock issue, put it up with, say, three or four remaining. Because there is a shot clock discrepancy, more than likely you put the shot up but with about six remaining. Well, you're not going to wait until the end of the yeah. shot clock. You're going to try to get it down as close as you can, but you're going to take a good, you want to get a good shot. A put back, many times you get the ball on the rim, and that put back is what can win the game. Now, Roy Williams sees the alignment and calls the timeout. He's also going to get Bobby Fraser, another guard in the game defensively. Well, I think he's, he looked to see the personnel that Florida State had on the court, and now he's going to put some perimeter defenders in there. But, Tim, you're absolutely right. What's most dangerous for North Carolina in this situation, I think, is penetration by Tony Douglas to the basket because that'll draw the defense, and you're, the point you made is a good one. Even if he misses the shot, if the defense collapses on Douglas, then Florida State's an excellent position for an offensive rebound. There you see the standings after the Wake Forest win in Winston-Salem tonight. No one undefeated in conference play any longer. And Florida State would love to move into that 4-2 and two category with a win. And uh, who would have thunk it? North Carolina team that many people thought could run the table in December might be staring at their third conference loss. And we haven't reached midseason as yet. We shall see. Well, and they were up by 13 points. That's right. You, in don't this often, you don't often see them lose that kind of a lead in a half. All right, here's Douglas. Look for the penetration that you were talking about. Again, it's Hansbrough checking him. And a shot clock violation. Again, Hansbrough did the number defensively surprising Douglas. And it's North Carolina that has there's, the ball. There's got to be more time on the clock than that. Yep. Should be around 3.6. Well, the, it was 16.3 with 12 seconds left so on the four shot point clock. To, yes, it should be right at 4.3. So there's got to be more time on the clock. Yeah, I think Mike Eads is beginning to understand that. And we'll go. You know, the clock is supposed to be synchronized. And what we what we had at the last time out, we were talking about was 16.3 on the game clock and 12 on the shot clock. Yes, so it should be at 4.3 because it was a violation. Ball this, this, never this, got up this, on the this, rim. There you, yeah. And the officials, Carl Hess, Mike Eads. And I think Mike Eads is going to let me, going to let us know. Talk to Roy Williams about it. Okay. Well, this is uh, highly unusual. They did lose a second. They lost a full second, man. They did. And that could make a difference. Lawson at the buzzer. Good! Maybe not. Ty Lawson wins it at the buzzer. On a night when Tyler Hansbrough's 55-game streak of double digits or more, 10-plus points, came to an end, it was his defense that allowed Lawson's offense to win it at the buzzer. He could care less about well, now, that 55-game streak. Now, Tim, the officials, by rule, have to review that, although in looking at the replays we've shown you, it looks like that ball definitely was out of his hand. People talk about the speed of Ty Lawson, and you saw that speed right there. They got him the ball. He got up the court. I'm really surprised they did not impede in any any better fashion his move to the basket. Well, again, he got it, there very quickly. Yes, he did. But in that situation, you don't want to foul. So that's a very difficult defensive situation to be in. You do not want to foul, and so you play sometimes a little bit softer defense than maybe you would under normal circumstances. But Lawson gets the ball up the court very quickly, knocks it down, gets a three, 
And North Carolina, a very improbable win. Indeed. An incredible victory. And uh, for Florida State, a wonderful performance by Tony Douglas. Well, here's the end. What we're talking about with the clock, the ball clearly out of his hand before that clock went to zero. And that's the rule. It's got to be out of his hand before the clock goes to zero. And, you know, sweet revenge for him, too, because yeah. of that injury here a year ago. Uh, for him to be able to make that play and, and, again, give Danny Green credit. What a remarkable defensive play he made to tie this game when they were down three. Well, that three-point play. And, and here's the shot that, that ends the game. But another thing that I'll tell you, Tim, is that on Florida State's last possession, who was it? who came up huge with a defensive play. It was Tyler Hansbrough, yeah. again, matched up against Tony Douglas on each of the last two Florida State possessions. Tyler Hansbrough, that uh, consecutive